everybody. <laughs> it's a rainy day here in Tomar. I'm standing below a, a very daunting statue of the man who founded the Templar Castle and convent here in Tamar and I'm on my way to go up there and I wanted to have today's reflection be about trust. Kind of a it's an ever pervading theme, isn't it, in life to trust. Whether you are doing so for spiritual growth or whether you're just simply doing it to make it through something difficult. Trust seems to be a word I hear a lot, especially in Western culture. And I can honestly say it's a big part of my own life too. And trust usually comes in the face of something that is a challenge. I like hope. Hope usually comes in the face of something that's a tension or an unknown or a challenge in some way. And yesterday I had an interesting moment of trust in the Camino path. I was, uh, if you saw my pictures on my Facebook personal page, I took the road from Villa de Barquina to Grau. Grau is a real tiny, tiny little town. And the footpath led not just through kind of out in nature like it's been doing through pasture lands and that, but it led me into what seemed to be a forest. You know, there was no official name to the forest. And when I turned off, the signage became a little shaky. There weren't the stickers anymore with the seashell on it or the posts that I seem to find all throughout the path so far. But there were dependably the same yellow arrows. And those yellow arrows seem to be done by some kind of paint or spray paint. And they're on public things like a, an electrical pole or a, a, a freestanding wooden sign. So I, I felt comfortable. It was a little shaky at first and I got going back and these were paths that I think a car could drive. They were wide enough, but they were just immersing you deeper and deeper into a forest that was filled with eucalyptus. It was so powerful. I mean, the air was just dripping with this eucalyptus smell. And it was really fun. It was really beautiful being out there. The hike early in the morning was rigorous for my body. It was some really steep grades of incline and decline. Uh, and on my Google Maps, <laughs> the road that's the main road that has all the trucks, it's just mostly flat. So it must take you off path enough where you get into some kind of ridge and low mountain zone. Anyway, there were a couple times along the path that the yellow arrow was absent. One of them I had to look around quite a bit and it had been broken, but I could still discern which way to go. Then about an hour into it, I, I reached a spot where the road went in three separate directions and there was nothing, no yellow. I walked a little down each road. I looked in hidden places behind trees. I looked to see what might have fallen down and I simply didn't see anything at all. My intuition was telling me which way to go, but before I had a chance to say, okay, I'm gonna to have to just trust my intuition, my trust in the very path, in that there'd be guidance external of myself along the path, awakened me into exactly what I needed. And looking down in the sand with some sticks, some sticks, somebody had put a big arrow leading down the one of the three choices and it was the one I was actually going to take. My trust in being guided by the people that have gone before me, by the ones who love the Camino de Santiago in Portugal and have created all these this wonderful way marking and signs, my trust in the process that I could just not look at my phone, which my phone was of no use, <laughs> not look at my book, because the book really at, in that level of detail, it's not meant for that level of detail, so it was of no use either. But it was the trust that the people before me and the people that care about this pilgrimage would somehow provide what was needed for someone like me who didn't know where I was going. And it was there. So it got me thinking a bit about trust. Uh, not perhaps in a new way, and I'm sure trust is a, a common word in your own life, but it got me thinking of 
why trust and in what do we trust? Why trust? Well, trust gives us a chance to open up to new possibilities, doesn't it? So if we don't trust, we contract down with our perspective around something. We, we can narrow down into thinking something needs to be a certain way to be okay. And when that doesn't happen for us, inside of us or outside of us, we can be shaken by it. When we trust that everything's going to be okay, whether we believe in a higher power, I do, or not, when we trust that something is at work and things are going to be okay, then we surrender into not only a realm of knowing in the end it's going to be okay, but also we open up ourselves to awaken into new possibility. My trust that the path was supporting me, I believe that that was one of the reasons I woke up and saw what was right before me on the sand. And oftentimes the direction that we need, the hope that we need, the stability that we need, the bells ringing to wake us up to this, <laughs> are right before us, but we, we don't see it, we don't hear it, we don't know it. And part of the operative principle in trust is to provide a spaciousness so that our minds, our hearts, and our souls can interface with reality from a place that is filled with many more options and many more solutions. But trust also does something else as well. It creates within us an inner state that we might call peace or contentment. To trust is to surrender in such a way that we come to a place of inner stability. When you fully trust someone or something, there is a way you are relaxed into it, into the reality of it. What if we trusted life 100%, life capital L? What inner state would come forward in practicing that level of trust? It would move beyond practicing it, right? It would move us into a state of relaxation and contentment, a state that is inherently open to the adventure and to the possibility. But part of the work with that is to continually question, in what do you trust? <laughs> like on the back of our bills, in God do we trust? In what do you trust? Do you trust in wrong ways? Not wrong in like a wrong, but do you trust in ways that let you down? Do you have an idea of people, of a person, of an event, of a scenario that you're expecting something that's not worthy of that level of trust? When we ask ourselves, in what do we trust? It breaks away any of the ways that we might be leaning into something, holding on to something, grasping something that doesn't deserve that level of trust. So two reflections for today. Why trust? And my thought is that trust opens us up to the possibilities of experiencing reality as it is, and hence leading us to possibility and solutions but it also opens us up to the inner state, to the way of moving through life that has contentment. And second, in what do you trust? Have a great day. I will see you along the way. Mwah.